Well hello internet and welcome to part two of my Git video tutorial series. Today we're going to focus in on remote repositories, GitHub, pushing, polling, aliases, and tags. So basically we're going to cover everything except for branching and general workflow operations which I'll cover in the next part of the tutorial. And of course if you didn't watch part one you pretty much have to watch it because you're going to get lost here otherwise. I have a link to it in the description under the video as well as in the upper right hand corner. Now basically the reason you'd want to use GitHub is it's going to allow you to host your code repositories online. And in this video I'm going to set everything up and go over pretty much everything that I do. Now of course the very first thing you're going to want to do here is go to github.com and create an account for yourself. And remote repositories are normally read only, however since this is going to be your account it's going to allow you to both read and write since you will be authorized to do so. And then basically all you're going to need to do is either push or pull updates to this remote repository. So after you go and you create your account on GitHub you're going to come up here and you're going to click on this little plus sign. Whenever you do you're going to see create new show up on the screen and you're going to click on that and then whenever you do you're going to see new repository. So of course click on that. That's going to take you over to this screen and inside of repository name you're going to want to give yourself some type of name that's unique and then you're going to want to type in a description here. Now I'm basically just using a junk directory I have from an old Android video tutorial I did and I'm going to leave this public and I'm not going to do anything else here except come down here and click on create repository. And that's pretty much it. Now what you're going to need to do is set everything up on the local side and you're going to see a couple little things down here in regards to what you would type in your terminal. I do things slightly different and I just want to make sure that you completely understand. Basically I'm going to do this down here with a couple added things. So let's jump over inside of the terminal. All right, and just like before, we're going to come into the terminal. We're going to go to the directory that we want to use. And we're going to type in git init, right like that. And then you're going to type in git add and then a space and a period and that is basically going to stage the entire directory for you. And then we're going to come in here and type in git commit dash m and then I'm going to type in initial project version. You can type in anything you want though. Then we're going to jump back over inside of GitHub and we're going to come right here where we see this git remote add origin this guy right here and we're going to copy that and then basically this is going to be known as origin thereafter but I'm going to show you how to change the name. And then we're going to jump back over in our terminal and we're going to paste git remote add origin that thing that we just copied from GitHub and then hit enter of course. And then to push that whole entire directory of information over to GitHub we're going to type in git push origin master. And then it's going to ask you for your username. My name's Derek Banna, so I'm going to type that in. And it's going to ask you for your password and hit enter. And then it's going to do all the work for you and upload that to GitHub. Then if you jump back over into GitHub, you're going to see that that whole directory full of information is showing there. So everything's working good. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cycle down to the end of the screen. And I'm going to click on Add a README. Little window's going to open up. And here I'm just going to type in code for my Android Fragment tutorial because that's what this is. And I'm going to show links here to the videos if anybody wants to see them. Like I said, this is just an example. And then after I type in a README I like, I'm going to come down here and click on Commit New File. And there you're going to see inside of here you're going to see readme.md. Now basically what we're going to do is we're going to pull this updated information inside of the terminal. I'm going to do it live this time so that you're going to see how to pull files inside of GitHub down to your local server. Okay, and here we are inside of the terminal. And if I would want to list all of these remotes and their URLs that, you know, I have connected here, I would just type in git remote dash v, and you're going to see there is simplefragment.git. And then if I would want to get the data from the remote, but not merge the changes that are there with my work, I would just type in git fetch origin. And there you can see it worked. But, however, if I would want to actually pull all of those directory files down along with any changes, I need to do something a little bit different. I'm going to type in git pull, and then I'm basically just going to come up here, and I'm going to copy this guy right here, copy, and I'm going to paste that in there, and it went and updated everything. So the directory that is on or all of the files that are on GitHub are now here. And if we type in ls, you're going to see there's readme. It shows up. See? Readme. Now let's say that I would want to put a file on my local server and then have it get uploaded onto GitHub. 
Well, basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in a series of ignores that I want to upload to GitHub. And like I said, I'm on my local machine right now doing this. So then I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to save this as git ignore. And of course, make sure that it's saved in simple fragment, the same directory that you are using on GitHub. And then you are going to, of course, hit save. And then in the terminal, you're going to type in git add, and then you're going to type in git ignore, this guy right here. Don't forget to put the period inside of there. And then you're going to type in git commit dash m. And then here I'm going to put a little note that just says added git ignore for Android. And all that information is going to be uploaded to GitHub. And if we jump over to GitHub, you're going to see it shows up, or we can refresh the page, you're going to see that git ignore is indeed there. Now, if you'd like me to come in here and actually do all this live, I'm going to go into the Android Manifest, and this is all 100% live right now. I'm inside of GitHub, and I'm going to click on Android Manifest, and I'm going to click on Edit. So there that is, and there that is. Now inside of here, I'm just going to put a junk comment, random comment, right like that. And then I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to say Commit Changes. And of course, I could also come in here and add in information in regards to this commit right here. Click on Commit Changes. There we go. Now let's go into the terminal, and let's go pull down those changes. So git pull, and then I'm going to, well, rather than typing all that out, I'm going to go git remote dash v. There we go. And I normally use all kinds of aliases inside of here, but I, I shut all that stuff off just so that I could have exactly the same things on my screen as you see. And then I'm going to paste the URL inside of there. Da, 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 da. And then I'm just going to jump into a basic text editor. Here's simple fragment, Android manifest. And there you can see random comments showed up. So that's pretty useful. Now, of course, the next logical thing is how to update to GitHub. And let's just put two inside of here, just like that. I'm going to say file save. And then I'm going to jump back over into my terminal. And I'm going to type in git add Android manifest dot XML. And if I want to push this over inside of GitHub, git commit dash m, and then I'm going to say um, changed Android manifest comment, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then if I want to push this over to GitHub, I just type in git push, boom, jump back over into GitHub, click on simple fragment here, and there's Android manifest, open it up, and you can see random comment two is right there. So that's how to save in both directions. And now I'm going to jump over into the terminal and cover a bunch of the other different things. If, for example, I decided I didn't like the name origin for this, see, origin right here, right there. Let's say I instead, since this is simple fragment, I wanted to shorten the name to SF, for example. Basically, to do that, we just come in here. Let's clear the scroll back. See, well, let's leave it there. Git. And if I want to change the name, I'm going to type in remote, and I'm going to type in rename, and then I'm going to type in whatever the name of it is right now, and then I'm going to type in SF. There we go. And you can see now it's no longer origin like it is here. Now it's SF. So that's just a little weird thing that I just thought I'd cover. Now let's take a look at tagging. Now tags are basically used to tag files at any point in history in which you would want to add a tag. And if you wanted to see all of the tags that you currently have on your system, you just type in get tag. And there you can see I have three of them right there. If I would want to come in here and create a tag for my previous commit, the commit that I just made, all I'm gonna do is type in git tag dash a. And in this situation, I'm going to type in version 0.2. I don't know, just anything. And then I'm gonna type in M and then I can come in here and go version 0.2 and hit enter. And then let's clear our scroll back here and type in get tag again. And you're now going to see that version 0.2 is right there. If I wanted to see the details in regards to this tag, I would just type in git show and then I would type in version 0.2 and there you can see all that information and of course to get out of it well you can scroll through and see exactly what's going on here and to get out of it I'm just going to type in Q clear scroll back then let's say that we have a previous commit but we do not have a tag for it how would we go back and change that well basically what I'm going to do here is I am going to open a text editor and I am going to make a change to this and then I'm going to cycle through my little things here and add or stage the Android manifest file that I just changed and then get and commit this guy. 
So let's just say change comment to three. Now, of course, since I just made this change, I could add the tag immediately and it would take effect, but let's do it another way. And let's list out all of our commits on the screen. And there you can see all of them. And here you can see change comment to three. Now let's say that I wanted to come in here and I wanted to actually change or add a tag to this commit right here. Well, I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna grab, let's say the first six of these hash codes that we have right here so that it'll be different. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna hit Q to get out of that again, clear scroll back. And then I'm gonna type in git tag dash A. And let's say that I want to mark this as version four. I can just come in here and go V zero point, let's change it to five. And then I'm just going to paste in the beginning of that hash. And you can see a little editor pops up here. And I'm just going to type in a message like, course hit I. I changed the comment to include number three. And then of course hit enter and then of course hit escape and then hit colon WQ right like that and then hit enter and then that's going to be saved for you. And if I type in get tag you're going to see that there it is right there. Okay so that's pretty much most of the things you'd want to do with tags. You know, the other thing I can think of is you could also push your tags up to GitHub and to do that it's just git push SF and then let's say that you want to push version 5 up there or 0.5 just type in V 0.5 like that and that's going to push that to GitHub or your remote repository doesn't really matter how you think of that if you jump over into GitHub and click on simple fragment and then you click on releases right here you can see there it is right there and you can see a minute ago see works seamlessly right inside the terminal and another thing you might want to do with tags is let's say you want to push every single one of them you could go git push sf and then dash dash tags like that and that's going to push every single tag all at one time and you can see the ones that went up there and if we come in here and refresh this you're going to see all of them that are on the screen and that basically just leaves us with aliases and how to create them. Um, basically, they're just going to provide you shortcut ways to do all sorts of different things. So let's say that I wanted to change my commit from having to type in git commit to co instead. All I would do is just go git config right like this. And then I would type in global alias. And then here is where you're going to put what you want to change it to. So if I want to change commit to co, I would just type in CO, and then this is going to be the thing that you're going to be replacing. So just hit enter. And now what I can do is come in here and go git add, and in this situation just hit a period inside of there. And then I'm gonna say git CO, since I added that alias on there, dash M, and then I'm just gonna say demonstrate alias. There we go. And you can see that that was changed. And the last thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to clone a git repository. All right, so we are on Git, and I'm just gonna click on the little guy up here, and then I'm going to go and find myself a repository I'd like to clone. So I'm gonna click on Explore, right there, Explore. And then inside of here, I'm gonna type in, I don't know, let's just type in Google, just to type in something. And there we go. We can see all kinds of different repositories that we could clone. Uh, let's say I wanna get to the Google Pac-Man. Basically, I'm just gonna click on this, and then I'm gonna come up here where it says fork, and I'm gonna click on fork. This is inside of GitHub, and you can see it's building it right there. And there we go. And if I wanna clone this guy, I'm gonna come over here where it says clone URL. I'm gonna click on this, copy the clipboard popped up for, for a second, and then I can jump back over inside of my terminal. And to get all of those files, I'm just gonna type in git clone, and then paste in the URL that I got from GitHub. Actually, I'm not gonna wanna do it here though. Um, let's go and make directory pacman and change directory to pacman. There's nothing inside of there. And then I'm gonna clone it by going git clone, paste the URL inside of there and hit enter. You can see it's cloning everything. And if I do ls, Google pacman, change directory to Google pacman ls. And there are all of the files. So that's how to do a whole bunch of things with git and GitHub, like I said before, in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover branching and pretty much all the general workflow sort of operations that you'd want to do with Git. Well, I wanted to end this video by telling you guys that I'm giving away another Samsung Galaxy Note 3 smartphone. And to enter, all you need to do is make a two-minute or shorter video telling me why you should win. And the funniest video is going to win. There's more information in the description underneath the video. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.